Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So what I've got on the bench this week is a couple of tools that I use to take care of my pool. We've got a brush and a skimmer basket. And I think the skimmer basket came with this blue pole here originally when I bought it. And then I grabbed the brush, didn't come with a pole, and I was just switching back and forth. They did, you know, they, they, uh, there's just two things you squeeze and it slides in and out. Not a huge deal, but it is annoying, especially when you're going back and forth between using the two of them. I was gonna buy another pole and I saw this one in someone's garbage pile. Pulled over, grabbed it, and it's not bent. Uh, it still locks, but it was missing the handle. And the handle actually serves two purposes. It keeps your hand from getting cut because this is just a sharp, thin wall aluminum pipe. Uh, and it also stops the pipe from going all the way down inside this locking ring. So I can imagine that was probably pretty annoying. This pipe probably dropped all the way in there. They got tired of taking the thing apart to get it back out and you cut your hand when you use it. I get it, but we throw way too much stuff out as a society. It's, it's a shame that more stuff doesn't get fixed. I mean, a lot of energy and material went into making this and all it needed was a new handle. Yeah, I can hear you. I know by the time you order the handle and pay the shipping, it probably costs as much as just getting a whole new pole with the handle on it. I get it. It's just, this, it's one of the core things that draws me to 3D printing is the ability to fix stuff like this and to add new life or to give new life or extend the life uh, to things that otherwise would have gone to the great garbage pile in the sky. So this one has the handle still on it. And I don't want to copy this design exactly for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, it's this is injection molded. Uh, it would be really tough to do these features in 3D printing because uh, it's like, you know, a half millimeter gap in between here. There'd be no way to dig the supports out. And TPU, the supports pretty much weld to something. This handle is also a little bit thin for my liking. I've got big hands. Um, I would like a bit, you know, thicker of a handle. So what I'm thinking we'll do is uh, we'll cut this off first. Uh, this is just some, uh, I actually found this a couple years ago and I originally just put some heat shrink tubing over the end of it. And that lasted for, uh, I don't know, two years and it's worn through and uh, it's really sharp again and uh, eventually this guy's going to slip off and the pole is going to get lost down in there again so uh, yeah, is this one the same way yep this one the handle also is what stops the pole from going down in there so I guess that's a standard part of the design so let's get this uh, let's get this heat shrink tape cut off of here and we'll measure the diameter of this All right, I want to be careful to try not to actually cut the, uh, the pole. I want to just cut the heat shrink off. So I think if we get it started, hopefully we can peel it off. I put two layers on the end thinking that uh, that would help protect that edge better. And it, it, you know, I guess it did. Two years isn't bad. I mean, I could just pop heat shrink on this again, but it's a perfect use case for, uh, for TPU. Okay, and uh, I don't know if there's a good camera angle there, but you can see how sharp the end of this is. It's just thin wall aluminum pipe. Actually, uh, I should probably deburr the edge of this before we try and push another handle uh, on this. All right, looks like this is 28.65. Slightly oblong. 20, 28.7. 28.8, I'm just going around seeing the widest and the narrowest. It's like 28.8, 28.6 at the narrowest. So we'll design to fall somewhere in there. It's 106, 107. So we'll go probably about 110 millimeters in length. All right, let's go fire up some software toys and see what we can come up with.
All right, and here is the design that I came up with. And I did end up going back and forth a couple of times on sort of the grip or accordion section here. I initially had more of these accordion sections and I had to size it down because this guy needs to print standing up without supports. TPU is a total pain in the butt to get supports off. If you have like a small flat section that absolutely just needs to overhang that you can cut the supports, like literally cut the supports off, it's not too bad, but if we had supports on these sections here, like if I wasn't able to have this 45 degree bevel uh, to meet each one of these larger rings, this could take hours to clean up with, uh, with the snippers, no, no exaggeration. So I had to adjust this so that we had uh, enough space to have these 45 degree bevels coming back up for each one of these accordion sections where we're gonna grip. And I left a healthy section down here at the bottom of the pole. So this is the top here and if I, uh, here, I'll turn on the hidden geometry so we can whack just this bottom section. You can see we have, I think, 10 millimeters of, of TPU on the end of it here to protect the end of that pole. So that should be no issues. I mean, we could probably launch this thing across the yard like an arrow and uh, it just bounce off concrete and be fine. Uh, our center bore, I sized to be the exact same dimension as the OD of that thin wall aluminum tube. I didn't leave any room for the fit because I want this guy to stretch just a little bit as we push it down over that pole. Uh, I may have to end up reprinting this if we can't get it onto the pole, but my idea is I don't want to glue this guy. I want this to go on that pole and I don't want it to come off. And if you remember, this handle is actually what stops that pole from sliding down into the larger section of the pole when the, uh, the connector coupler is unscrewed. So the pole tends to slam down in there. You know, you, you know, you loosen that connector section, you stand up the pole and, you know, the top part of the pole just sort of comes down and slams into, uh, so this face here, uh, here, I'll turn back off our, yeah, this face right here is going to slam against the, uh, the connector piece and it's going to try and hammer this guy off. So we need a real tight snug fit for this guy to be effective. But I think we'll have it sizing it to be the exact same dimension as the OD, the aluminum pipe. So let's, uh, let's get this printed. All right, and it is done, and it looks really nice on the outside. There was one spot here where I just cleaned it up a little bit when I popped it off of the bed where um, maybe the overhang didn't print just exactly right there on that bevel coming up off the bed. Texture looks good on the end. Oh, it does start on there. That feels like it's probably gonna go, and I think it's gonna be nice and tight. I'm afraid to go further because I don't wanna get stuck to where I can't get it off. This, this is aluminum and it's thin wall, so we're not really gonna be able to get a great grip on it with a tool uh, to yank this guy off if we get stuck and we're not all the way on. I think I'm gonna spray this with some Windex like I have for other slip fit stuff like this in the past and see if we can get this all the way on in one shot. So lock this as tight as I can. Oh, you know what? We should probably mark uh, mark our position here. So if we know we're we're down all the way. Ah, the pipe is slipping. That's what I was afraid of. You know, I'm gonna take this all the way out, wedge it up against something. I think we're there. Let me grab a mallet. Oh, that guy's on there. All right. Well, that went, uh, that was really tight getting that on there. I don't think it's going to come off. Uh, it might be a little bit more slippery till that Windex dries. Uh, but once that Windex dries, I don't think it's going anywhere.
All right, and there's the two together. You can see how much beefier this guy is versus uh, versus this one. And it's a little bit longer as well. This was like 106, 107, and this is 110. So super happy with how that came out. I think TPU is a great choice for this. I'm pretty sure this, uh, this handle is now gonna outlive uh, the rest of the pole. And realistically, both of them will probably outlive me, so. Guys, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me for this week's video. Uh, not a super complicated one, but really happy with how this came out and I did need to do it. Uh, if this is your first time on the channel, I do a new video like this, either fixing something or adding functionality to something or just sometimes creating something altogether new uh, here every single Friday. So if you enjoyed this video, if you got anything out of it, hit that like button. And uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, more functional printing, uh, you know, not just printing benches or trinkets, hit that subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.